Hi, and welcome to another Frivolous webisode. Today I'm bringing you a brand overview, who am I, of a drugstore brand that I was really curious to try, and as soon as I did, I decided I had to make a video on it and let you know all about it. This video is kind of brought to you, not sponsored, but brought to you by Portuguese Customs, because they've become so unhinged that I actually stopped buying uh, things that outside of the EU, um, unless they have customs included, because it was a, a completely uh, hair-tearing experience uh, to go through customs. They have a very glitchy website, and then the most passive-aggressive uh, call center. They're not a customer service. They're just a call center that calls you stupid. And if you call them and say, well, your website just made the document I uploaded blank and now the replace button disappeared. They they just question your humanity and your intelligence and they just stall until there's the deadline where the product gets sent back and you're just stuck with that. So that has been my experience and because of that I usually do one or once or twice a year, I do a big purchase from Colourpop when they have the sales, and I did one this year, and I wasn't even notified that it, what, it had arrived, so I can open the customs process and go through it. It just, the moment I went to check it, it had already been sent back. That's how it's been working. So I've been missing that kind of Colourpop kick of variety of spending X and instead of getting two products, three products because they're high-end or they're here in Portugal and everything is a bit more expensive, uh, I get 10 to bring to play with and different, I don't know, textures and different colors and a bit more, get a bit more experimental and playful with makeup. I've been missing that a lot. I have been hearing a lot about this uh, American drugstore brand called Moira and it seemed very fun but you know it's American so I thought I'm not gonna ever try it out until lo and behold I realized it was being sold in Europe uh, by a Spanish I think website called Maki Beauty and I decided to set some money aside for a couple of months and do a couple of batch orders of several of their products for me to try and here we are today I'm gonna go through all the products that I tried keep in mind that website doesn't have everything but still, they have lots of variety, but they don't have everything from Moira. Just keep that in mind. But there's there's a nice a nice mix here and there. A full face, I would say, without the complexion uh, products. And I'm going to kind of rate them from my least favorite to my mind-blowing kind of products. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. First thing I have here, it's the Chasing Eternity palette. And I have to spend just a minute talking about the packaging, which really impressed me. This is so sturdy, so nice. It feels really robust. Um, it has really nice details, like if this is all embossed, has some relief to it, the gold detailing, and even the box. I, I saved this to show it to you. It's that special. The box is just the same design as the palette. But then inside, when, inside, when, inside, when you open it, you can see this Art Deco detailing and then it has wings, has flaps for the box. How cute. A bit wasteful because this is absolutely useless, but how cute. And then um, you have the same thing, the embossing, the gold detailing, and then you have a nice mirror. And each little pan has the, the little stars and galaxies and planets. Uh, printed on them or stamped on them and you have a beautiful nude uh, and brown kind of palette. Who am I? Why didn't I buy a very bright colorful palette? Because I have so many. If I like this one I'd have another colorful palette cluttering my house. So I went with a brown one because I don't have lots of browns in palettes. Funnily enough. So let's talk about the formula, which is the most interesting thing. Now the formula um, for the mattes, this has mattes and shimmer slash metallics. The mattes are really nice, uh, very soft to the touch. They're really nice to apply and they blend beautifully. 
downside. You can't build them up to full opacity to the true color that you see in the pan. At least I didn't. Maybe I should try it with a primer, with another primer in another time. But for now, what I feel is these are really beautiful shadows. You just can't build them to the true color of the pan. Uh, so if you want full impact and if you want full opacity, this is not for you in terms of mattes. If you want something easy to work with, easy to blend out, these are super easy, super easy. Uh, thing is, they have a bit of kick up in the pan when you touch with your brush. So always tap your, your brush before applying onto your face to avoid fallout. The next thing are the metallics. And the metallics, again, are really nice. They are very soft and creamy. The thing is, I feel personally that they're not that shiny. They don't have that impactful shine that I was expecting. They're not as glossy as they look in the pan. That's basically it. Uh, and it's nice. If you use a bit of setting spray on them, it improves a bit uh, the, the shine payoff, but it doesn't go... It's not the super glossy, shiny, very current metallic formula or shimmery formula, formula that we're used to, if that makes sense. Um, I would say that people with textured eyelids, very dry eyelids, eczema, or even maturing eyelids with lots of wrinklage, maybe this is not the best type of formula for you because these are those kind of dry, slightly dry, although they feel creamy, dry looking uh, metallics or shimmers that may enhance texture. Next up are the Moira cream blushes and I would uh, rate, rate these higher if it wasn't for a fatal flaw. These are cream blushes that are very pigmented but they're not that emollient. So they're a bit finicky to blend out. So once you apply them, you have lots of color on your cheeks, you'll be super scared. And it, it is a bit tough to blend them out because they're not that, they don't have that slip that you would think a cream blush should have. So it will take some elbow grease. And because you, you're constantly blending and sort of rubbing, it doesn't lift the foundation underneath. It's not that situation. It's just the act of constantly uh, buffing the, the blush. You will remove coverage from your cheeks. If you're like me and you have high um, hyperpigmentation or something that you like to conceal on your cheeks, this is not the blush for you in that sense. And also, this is a feature, it depends on your taste. These are not glossy. Uh, these don't stay glossy, like, you know, the dewy cheek and lip um, palettes from Danessa Myricks. Those stay glossy on the cheeks and they stay tacky too. But these set down to a matte finish, which is really interesting. So you can get sort of a water, watercolory effect on the skin, which for somebody who doesn't need any coverage underneath will be fine. If you want coverage underneath, you'll not be happy with these. And they're a bit finicky to work. I think someone with a very deep skin tone will probably find these really fun to use because these really pop on the cheeks. And let me know if you have a deeper skin tone, how you get along with these if you have. Next up is the powder blush, and these are the matte blushes. It's called the Lucky Chance blush. I got mine in Amour, number seven, I think. And this for me is just a bit too peachy on the website. It looked a bit more berry, you know, but hey-ho. Uh, this is a very nice powder matte blush. So if you're looking for one, and if you don't want to spend a lot of money, I don't think this is a bad choice. It, it builds well, it blends out well, it doesn't come off really pigmented like the cream ones. It, it's easier to manage, so this is a good choice. Really like it. Not much to say about that one because it's, you know, it's a powder blush. It's a matte powder blush. <laughs> Next up are the At Glance Stick Shadows. I know they have uh, shimmery ones, but I really wanted to try the matte ones as, you know, color basis for me. These work really well. You can find affordable uh, crayon eyeshadows like these from Kiko and Mina, which I really love. These are also another excellent choice. These are very creamy. Uh, they blend out easily, but you can build them up without lifting itself. Um, and they last really well on the eyes. They're easy to blend with a brush. 
These work really nicely. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. Next up is another solid choice, which is the lipstick. I don't know the name of this. It's too small, I'm sorry, but I got the brown one. They didn't have many colors of this lipstick. This is the luminous uh, lipstick. This is not the matte one. It's so nice. It gives you good color payoff. Uh, it looks really beautiful. Doesn't emphasize any lines on the lips. Uh, and it looks really lustrous on the lips, which is really beautiful. It's really comfortable, very thin formula. It's not a thick, you know, kind of gloss stick for formula. It's not that, it's very thin, but feels balmy still. It feels like it's not going to go and smear and go into your fine lines or anything. Really, really solid formula. Highly rate this one. Next up, the lip oils. These are the Glow Getter lip oils. I firstly got the brown one, and then when I tried it, it it's more of a bricky, orangey brown instead of a actual brownie brown, <laughs> chocolatey brown. So I like the formula so much, despite the color, that I ended up getting the clear one. And why? Because the formula is great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify this as a lip oil. A lip oil for me, and I'm very used to the ColourPop lip oils, is very is a thinner formula but still cushiony that adheres to your lips. This one feels like a classic thick gloss. It's not a gloopy gloss that looks stringy, not like that, but it still feels thicker like a gloss. I know why they called it an oil because this is actually very hydrating on the lips. And the other upside of being more gloss like in terms of viscosity and thickness, it's that it lasts really well on the lips for a long time. I'm going to reapply it. It gives you lots of shine. It uh, kind of fades the lines on the lips, which I really appreciate without looking loopy. So I'm really chuffed with this one. Now, we're going into top three territory. And up until now, each product here is about 10 euros each, except for the palette, which is 21, I think, which is not the most inexpensive pricing, but it's still, you know, different formulas and different color stories. I like that. Um, but this one is a little bit below. It's, I think, seven euros, I think. And this is the Moira Statement Gel Liner. My friends, I wasn't expecting to like this as much as I did. This is a very good gel liner. Of course, I was drawn to this color because it's me. And it's so good. It just glides on the eyes really easily. It's very creamy. You can go over a couple of times without it picking up on itself or starting to dry down and crackle. But then it sets and it doesn't budge. It has transferred onto my lids but it's so hot that it gets to a point where nothing stays, everything goes badly on my eyes with so much heat and sweat. But this has lasted me very well on my eyes and I've been loving using this, you know, for a quick liner. I can't speak to how it will um, perform when you try to blend out, you know, people who take eyeliner, gel eyeliner and blend it out. Some dry too quickly, others stay too, stay too creamy. I can't speak to that because I only use this as a line, you know, on the eyes. But this is fantastic. And the color selection, chef's kiss. Now this one. If you know, if you remember Stila coming out with the first glitter liquid eyeshadows that went mainstream, everybody had one. This is... I'd say a more elegant and revisited uh, version of that. These are so good. These are the Diamond Days liquid shadows. I know they have matte ones, matte, uh, matte liquid shadows. I couldn't find any on the website, but these are so good. It is full opacity impact in one swipe. Of course, you can add a dot to your eye and just blend with a, a blending brush and you'll get a scattered glitter effect. But I like to just foil my eyes with this and look like a disco ball. And I've loved this. This color is amazing. I'll let you know which one is it because I can't read it. But I highly recommend uh, checking these out. And in terms of formula it is a lot thinner than the steeler ones used to be the they were they felt a bit heavy and after a while after setting they started to crackle sometimes some glitter fell onto your face 
I haven't used this for a full day, but I have used this um, for about four hours and it didn't go anywhere. It didn't crackle, didn't crease. It just stayed put. It was phenomenal. It didn't burn my eyes, but I must tell you, there is an off-putting smell to this, almost like perm chemicals, but very light. It doesn't it doesn't attack you and punch you in the face. It's there though, but it didn't hurt my eyes. I don't know, I don't know, but just keep that in mind. <laughs> just letting you know, I really enjoyed this though. Disco ball for me. Now, the same as with the, the liquid glitter eyeshadows, I don't know how this hasn't gone viral. Maybe it has and I haven't noticed it hasn't shown up on my internets. <laughs> Or maybe Moira doesn't do that much sponsored content. I don't know. But I'm used to talking about stuff that months later becomes viral, like the Roman lip tints and Galaxia, the wet finish eyeshadow that um, was on the retro pal mini palette. Nobody liked it, and then suddenly everybody likes it because it's in a new palette. I don't know what's wrong with people. Anyway, these are the Moira cream eyeshadows. Friends, we should be running on the streets screaming about these. I love these. These are all um, kind of shimmery with a wet effect. If you get um, one of these very neutral shades, like this is an Orion. It's one of the, the ones that I've used the most because, you know, every day swipe on the eyes, go out the door. Uh, but this is Orion and it's a very neutral shade that gives you that kind of wet eye effect um, and then you have very bright beautiful colors I'm wearing this one are the fuchsia purpley fuchsia on my eyes so beautiful it gives you so much dimension and shine and playfulness this is the thing I've been craving for and the texture is delightful it's a very soft emollient powder yeah um, it, it's a bit thinner and a bit less no, a bit creamier, I don't know, than the ColourPop. It's it's not comparable in terms of it's a dupe, but just letting you know. You can shear them down, you can use them full on, full impact. These are liquid glass at an affordable price with fun colors for your eyes. Are you kidding me? Bring me more. And that being said, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if there's something from Moira that I should definitely try that I missed out on. Keep in mind, not everything is uh, on sale at the Spanish website, so maybe we don't have access to everything. But let me know if there's something else from Moira that I should try. Will you uh, try any of these products? Also, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, if you've enjoyed this video, like, subscribe if you haven't. And as always, thank you for spending your time on me, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!